I recently uploaded a video showing you how to make this device with a Esprino Pixel.js board. So this is basically a counter that you can move up and down with the buttons on the side of it. But it also updates the graph and every day at midnight it will um, add a new bar to the graph and zero the counter. So that after a few days you'll get a nice graph of everything that you've, you've counted um, over those, those days. So in that um, video, I only showed you how to use these buttons to, to make something happen. But obviously this gets way more interesting when it can count automatically. So I'm gonna show you how to um, add some extra hardware to it. So for this, I'm actually using a um, pyroelectric motion sensor. So these are the kind of things that you have in a uh, burglar alarm. So all you have to do with this is connect it up to um, power and ground and a signal. And for the power on these, um, you need to have realistically around five volts. Um, so you can't run them off the, the watch battery that this might have. Um, for this, we're actually running it off of a roughly four volt um, lithium polymer cell. If you want more information about changing these so that they will run off lower voltages, um, just check out the motion sensor page on the Esprino website. And there's a bit of info about how to use them and wire them up there, as well as how to make modifications to um, make it work off lower voltages. But for now, um, we'll just connect this up. So we connect power and ground. Um, on the board, you can see that um, these pins are marked V in and ground. So we'll put those in there. V in will connect directly to this battery. Uh, rather than 3.3 volt, which is the regulated 3.3 volt supply. And then we'll connect this to any input and we'll make it A0 for now. So, um, I'm currently connected with Web IDE and I've uploaded the code from the example um, video that we had before. Uh, it's this web page. So um, if we look at the value of the A0 pin, uh, so if I do A0.read, it's zero by default. If I put my hand over it, it'll turn true and then it'll turn off a few seconds later. Um, there's a little um, little adjustment knob on the side here, which you can, you can change um, for exactly how long this will turn on for. But two seconds is a, is a good number. So all we really want to do is to read when this pin goes high, which is pretty much the same thing we're doing for the button. So we'll basically take this set watch command, um, in fact, the one that counts up, and instead of button one, we'll make the A naught. And because we're not using a button, this time we're gonna make it explicit that we actually want the rising edge uh, of the signal. So we don't wanna count twice, one when it goes up, once when it goes down. Um, and now if I just upload this again, we should find that um, if I put my hand over it, it'll count up. Wait a few seconds for that signal to go back low again. Put my hand over, it'll count up again. So now you can quite happily um, count the number of times people walk past your, your sensor. So this is useful, um, but you might want to do something wirelessly. You might want to use something like a PuckJS device to um, to put somewhere remotely and um, and then to to send the signals via Bluetooth low energy to make this work. So we're just going to um, to delete this line and re-upload and I'll unplug the um, the sensor. And then we're going to use PuckJS to use the Bluetooth UART command to send the um, the count function um, command over. So when we say count one, it'll count up um, just as, as we expect. All we need to do is send that a new line over the Bluetooth UART. The only thing to watch out for is that um, on Pixel.js, when you disconnect Bluetooth, um, this Bluetooth console that you see here moves onto the LCD so that if there are any errors or you want to print anything, it just appears directly on the display and you don't have to worry. Uh, but this isn't going to work very nicely when this is continually connecting and disconnecting because we'll see it on the display. 
So all we need to do is say Bluetooth dot set console true. And set console will have no effect normally because we're already on Bluetooth. But set console true says keep the console on Bluetooth regardless of what else happens. Even if Bluetooth disconnects, don't do anything else. So now if we disconnect, you won't see anything on the display at all. It'll just work. So let's now connect to our PuckJS device. Um, so it's very much the same. Um, all we need to do now is, um, is replace this code with something that will send that command. And if you look on the Esprino website, there's a page on Bluetooth UARPs. And all we really care about is, um, is sending a simple command. Now this one will pulse an LED on a PuckJS device. So let's use this. Uh, I'll actually put that into a function called count. And then um, we'll change this from PuckJS to PixelJS. Uh, we'll actually, because I've got a few Pixel devices, I'll explicitly say I want to connect to this one because this is what I know the name is. Um, when you connect it to a device, you'll see in the bottom right, it'll actually tell you what the name is there. So you can just make a note of that. And now instead of saying digital pulse, we just want to say count one. Um, to get an idea of when it's busy and um, when it's doing stuff, let's actually just um, uh, use the LEDs on it to show the status. So we'll turn the blue LED on. And um, when everything's worked, we'll, we'll turn it off. And maybe if there's an error, because sometimes there are errors, sometimes it will just have trouble getting radio connection. Um, we'll, we'll show the error with a, a flash of the red LED. So we'll use digital pulse for that so we don't have to worry too much. LED one, pulse it to one and pulse it for a second, say. Okay, and that's basically all we need. So let's upload this. If I say count now, hopefully we'll see blue. Is that gonna change? Yep, there you go, and it's counted up. Um, now, sometimes this may not work. Um, I don't know whether it'll happen now, but if it does, um, we could actually quite happily work around this by um, retrying. So we'll just say set timeout count and set it back to um, to try again in, in one second. Okay, so in that case, there was an error um, and actually I forgot to turn the LED off there. So it just left it on. So let's upload this. Try again, count. So it's worked, um, but if there was a mistake, it would now try again. Um, so how would we use this? Well, we can use setWatch the same way we did before. Let's say setWatch, we'll just call count on the button, repeat true edge rising. So now if I press this button, it'll light up so it's busy. Then hopefully it's got a connection and it goes up. And in fact, we can um, we can use some of the onboard sensors. We could use the onboard light sensor or the onboard magnetometer. So um, if we look at um, an example for using PuckJS to detect when a door's open or when it's not, we can use the magnetometer and just see when the magnetic field gets more than a certain amount. So if I take this code here, I um, might as well leave that set watch in. And we'll say uh, that if the door is uh, not open, uh, which, I know, hang on, uh, let's say we're looking, yeah, if the door is not open, then hopefully the magnetic field will be higher. Um, then we'll just call count. This may actually work the wrong way around, but. Um, but let's upload this and see what happens. So, okay, um, nothing's happening, but if I move the magnet close, 
we'll see that now this, um, this turns on, it'll um, increase the counter. If I take it away again, nothing will happen. If I put the magnet close again, it should, should try again. So now obviously, um, you notice this time it, it found there was a problem, but it's trying again and, and it still manages to increase the count. So now you have this really nice remote sensor. Um, you can just put the Pixel JS within radio range and you can put the, the puck by your door or whatever you're measuring um, and you're completely sorted. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.